Welcome to the television broadcast of the Grace Chapel AME Church. For the next 60 minutes, tune in and enjoy the best in singing, preaching, praying, and teaching God's Word. This program is dedicated especially to those who are sick, shed in, prison bound, or just can't get to church. Come on in and join us Monday through Wednesday, 9 to 10 a.m. mornings, 3 to 4 afternoons, and 9 to 10 p.m. nights. Sit back and enjoy yourselves. Hope you like it. God bless you all. You can also see our full-length sermons and videos. Just log on to our official website, gracechapelamechurch.org. Brother Rudolph Pitts, Brother Junior Clark, Brother Sylvester Strong Jr. That's our decision to shut in at this time. We want to say happy birth, happy 25th birthday to Reverend Chapman this morning. And may God bless him with many more. <laughs> family, uh, Walt, James, and Jackie lost their brother JT on yesterday, and the funeral is set for Saturday at 11 a.m. here at the church. There will be a board meeting today at the church. Everyone is asked to stay for the meeting. On next Saturday, March 16th, the missionaries in YPD will have their screen meeting at St. Paul Covington beginning at 10 o'clock a.m. On next Sunday, the Women in White will have their annual uh, program, the missionaries. The program will begin at 1 o'clock and the speaker will be Crystal Shapiro, who is the 6th District uh, WMS Treasurer. Dinner will be served as a pickup and go after service. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. On April 14th, we will have our mortgage burning program. The speaker will be Bishop Reginald T. Jackson of the 6th District. The program will begin at 2 and dinner will be served between services. That is all the announcements I have at this time. We will start our worship program off with a prayer by Brother Togo and a scripture by Reverend Chapman. Amen. Good morning to everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, sir. You know, today is a, a special day. Yes. Every day you wake up, it's a special day. Yes. Yes. You get ready to serve God every time you wake you up. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And get him all the praise. Tell him he thank him where he done brought you from. All right. All right. 
not where you're trying to go, but where he already brought you from. I talk like this because he taught me a long time ago what to talk about. He said, people always not going to agree with you. But see, I'm not talking to people, I'm talking to you. You know, it's good when you know God and you know when he's talking to you. Our Father. Our Father. Our Father. Yes, sir. All oh, have us. Yes. We're not talking about your Father, we're talking about our Father. Yes. He woke us up early this morning. Yes, he did. A nice, nice, pretty day. Yes. He gave us rain the last few days. Well. He gave us sunshine this morning. Oh yeah, yeah. And I want to say thank you, Jesus. Thank you. So you did something that man cannot do. That was it. I said, Lord, how much on us this morning? Yes. Yeah. Father, we living in the days we just don't know what's gonna happen. Well. But I'm so glad this morning so glad. that I found you a long time ago. That's the reason it don't matter no more what the people say. Well, because I know I got God on my side. Yes, sir. I wake up in the morning, I'm able to reach out and hold your hand. Yes. You help me go to the restroom. Yes, sir. Yes. You help me go down to my kitchen. Well. And Father, you bring me back to your house one more time. Oh, yeah. That's why I said thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Because you didn't have to do all those things. Well, I know it was because I had been so good. But I know it was your will. Let me bring you back to this building one more time. And I want to say thank you. Father, we need you every day. This whole nation is corrupt these days. Well, you're the only one gonna have to straighten it out. Yes, sir. But you wait on us. They bow down on our knees. Said Jesus, we need you to help us in this nation these days. Our children won't do right. Well. Husband and wife won't do right. Well, well. We might as well say church member won't do right. Well. Lord, have much on us this morning. Yes, yes. Father, we need you. Yes, yes. We need you, Father. Father, I need you for myself. Yes, sir. Because yes. I know my eyes getting a little dim. All right. All right. My steps getting a little shorter. Yes, yes sir. Oh, Father. All right. All right. And we going to call on you. We need to do it right now. Yes. Right now, Lord. Right now, Lord. We need to call on you. Help us, Father. Please help us, Lord. Please help us without young children. Yes. They fought him by the wayside, Father. <coughs> we need you. I need you with my children. Yes, yes, yes. I need you for myself. Yes, Lord. Bless the pastor and his family. Oh, yeah. Bless the associate pastor, sister. We want to thank you again. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus this morning. In the name of Jesus. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Yes, yes. 
cannot call his name too much. We need to call on him 24 hours a day. Every time you think you need to come put him first. Jesus, I need you. I don't need dangerous highways and byways. We need you so bad. Thank you again this morning. Brother Billy. Brother Billy. Oh, thank you, Billy. I'm sorry, Brother Billy Billington. 
And then after that song, we will have our word coming from Evangelist Chapman this morning. Amen. Then we'll have another song and the benediction.
4 through 5, and I'm going to need 8. Again, that is Acts 1, 4 through 5. All right. Thank and God. 8. I need my glasses. I hope it will be <laughs> Thank you, Todd. Thank you, Todd. Thank you. Amen. Amen. That's right. <laughs> and it reads as follows. Mighty Brian. And being assembled together with them, yes, yes. commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, Ye mm -hmm. have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. All right, all right, all right. Eight says, but ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Yeah, yeah. So far the scripture. Father, I thank you. I honor you. I glorify you, God. Yes. Lord, you said, he that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church, oh God. Yeah. So right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask, oh God, that you would give us ears to hear and a heart to receive, oh God. Lord, let your word come forth with power from on high, oh God. Yes, yes. And it is in Jesus' name Jesus. that I pray. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. As we look at this text today, I want to go back some because you have to understand what Jesus is talking about in Acts. It stems from Luke who wrote the book of Luke, who also wrote the book of Acts. Right. And Jesus had been with his disciples for three and a half years, training them and letting them know he's going to depart. All right. All right. And as we move forward through this month, we're going to get to the resurrection morning that he was talking about. But there was something that he was trying to instill in them while he was with them. He had to get them to understand that he would not be with them for long, right. but that he wanted them to continue the work. All right. He wanted them to be able to pick up where he left off. Yes. But he told them before he left, you. you have to wait here. Uh -huh. He said, I'm going to send you a comforter. I'm going to send you someone that's going to come alongside of you and help you out. Yeah. I'm going to send you someone that's going to give you power mm -hmm. to do this. Because as you realize, when Jesus didn't start his ministry until he was 30 years old. Right. And it wasn't until he got baptized with the Holy Spirit that he was able to go and do what God sent him to do. And so it is with us today. Yes. God has called us to do a work. Yes. But you know what, saints? There's something missing. Well, there is something missing that's not allowing us to be effective for the Lord. All right. And when God gave me this topic, I laughed because it said, I said, the missing ingredient. <laughs> the missing ingredient. I hear you. And I likened it to when you go bake a cake. All right. All right. If you know anything like baking a cake, if you miss something, mm -hmm. one ingredient. Uh -huh. Someone's going to know about it. I, I found out if you make a cake of uh, 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 bread, if you don't put baking soda in it, not in that, I'm not a baker, Amen. but if you don't put baking soda in it, it's not going to rise. Yeah. So I made one for my husband one day, and the whole <laughs> scent <it> dropped. <laughs> and then I said, well, what's wrong? Amen. I was missing an ingredient. Yeah. Yeah. And that was the stuff that made it rise. Yes. Yes. What good is a hot dog uh -huh. without ketchup on it? Come on, man. It's an ingredient uh -huh. missing, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. What good is french fries without ketchup? Yeah. It's missing. Yeah. 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 Yeah
this and an ingredient. And that's what's missing today in the church. If we look at what's going on around the church, the, ch the Holy Spirit is missing out of some of our churches. Because any time you can go to church and have a DJ behind you, and you're walking it out in the church, and you're dressed to a club, the Holy Spirit is not in that church. Because the Holy Spirit is going to check you. The Holy Spirit is going to make you feel uncomfortable. If I had walked in the church and he was doing all that was going on, I would have ran out of that church. Because the Bible says judgment comes to the house of the Lord first. And there's no way I would have been in the midst of all that going on with people bopping and whopping and everything else and been comfortable. So I say judgment comes in the house of the Lord. Not only is the Holy Spirit missing in the churches, but in some of our lives. We can't, we can't war off the enemy in our own strength. We need to lean on the promises of Jesus. He said, wait, he told them in Acts, he said, wait here. Don't depart until I send you the Holy Spirit. All right. And it wasn't until Jesus poured the Holy Spirit out on them on the day of Pentecost yes. that they was effectively able to do ministry. Yeah. You remember when he was going to be crucified, they all <coughs> left him. They all ran from him. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. But it wasn't until the, the book of Acts where you see the disciples became bold. All right. What was the missing ingredient? Uh -huh. Let's look at our text. He says to them, do not depart until I send you the Holy Spirit. Right. When you look in the book of Luke, he tells them, Luke 24, 49 says, and behold, I send the promise of the Father upon you. But tarry here in the city of Jerusalem until I endure you with power from on high. Yeah. That word endure means to provide a quality of life, to provide the ability. And that's what the problem is. We are working and operating without the ability to walk in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Right. To go when the Holy Spirit goes to tell us to go and to stay when he tells us not to go. Right. We can't do this alone, saints. Amen. Amen. We need the Holy Spirit in our lives yes, in order to yes. walk this walk. Yes, we do. As I prepared this sermon, I thought about the song Walt sings often. And the whole time I'm singing, we need your power. Yes. We, we, can't, we need the power to walk right. We need his power to talk right. We need his power to live right. We cannot do this without the Spirit operating in our lives. Even Jesus needed the Holy Spirit in order to minister. It wasn't until he was baptized that he was led into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit. Because God knew that the only way Jesus was going to be able to do that work and do it the way he did it was to endow him with the Holy Spirit. All right. And that's what we need today as we walk in this life. Amen. Amen. Jesus knew he was about to leave his disciples, but he knew that there was a plan that God had from the beginning. Yes. And he wanted to carry this plan out. He said, you're going to be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, in Judea, and through all so now it's up to us Amen. to be those witnesses. Yeah. Now it's up to us to go forth. Now it's up to us to be boldly a witness for the Lord. Yeah. But how can we do it? Yeah. He gave us a manuscript. Well. He said, if you love me, uh -huh. keep my commandments. Yeah. That's the first and most important thing. We can't expect to walk in the Holy Spirit or in the power of the Holy Spirit without keeping his commandments. He said, no good thing will I withhold from them that walk up right before me. So we have to be in a position and lined up with God and his word that we know when we need power to go forth and do what God calls us to do, yeah. we can say, Lord, I need your anointing to do this. Yeah. Lord, I need your power to do this. I can't do this on my own. 
We are living in a world where wrong is right and right is wrong. We are living in a world that it, if it would not be for Christ on our side, we could be drawn into mess. You have a lot of great men that started off powerful. That started off running great for the Lord. And I said, Lord, what happened to them? Some of the ones I listened to. And I said, Lord, what happened? What happened? And the Lord took me back to when David, when Saul, Saul was anointed as king. Uh -huh. Saul did a great work for the Lord. All right. But what happened to Saul? He got out of line. All right. He did what he wanted to do. And what did God do? He removed his spirit from him. Well, yes. well. Paul was troubled in his spirit yeah. when God removed his presence. So he had to send for David to play music to soothe his spirit. All right, right. Sometimes we need to check ourselves and see where we're at. Yeah. Sometimes we need to see why am I feeling this way? All right. yeah. If you're walking in a Holy Spirit, you shouldn't be struggling with different sins. Because the Holy Spirit is here to lead us into all truth. Yeah. The Holy Spirit is sent to us to guide us, yeah. to lead us. Yeah. The Holy Spirit is sent into us to check us. Yeah. Yeah. We should feel when we're doing something wrong if we're yeah. walking in the Spirit. Yeah. We should know when we're out of line with God yeah. when we're walking in the Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. The only way that you're going to be able to walk in the Spirit uh -huh. Is you gotta follow the manuscript. Oh, yeah. Yeah. God says there's nothing new under the sun. No, no, right. The same thing they went through in the Old Testament, okay. we're going through it in the New Testament. Yeah. Yeah. Except for it's getting worse. Yeah. But we have to remember it's a promise from God. Perilous times will come. Yeah. Perilous times have come. Yeah. And we're living it. So if they needed the Holy Spirit back then, yes. how much more do we need it now? Oh, yeah. All right. So Jesus started preparing them. You look at John and he tells them, let not your heart be troubled. All right. You believe in God, believe also in me. Yes. In my Father's house are many matches. Yes. Yes. And if it were not so, I would have told you. He started preparing them. He started telling them what he was doing. All right. But they didn't understand. They couldn't comprehend it because they wanted him to be with him always. But he said to him, it is expedient that I go. Yes. He had to go yes. because he needed to send All right. the comforter. Yes. He needed to send the Holy Spirit. Yes. Amen. 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 But the comforter, no. which the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he told me. He shall teach you all things mm -hmm. yeah. and bring all things to your remembrance. All right. And it wasn't until they seen Jesus after his resurrection, they started thinking about the things he started telling them. Yes, yes. Now they understand it. Why? Holy. Because the Holy Ghost yes. started reminding them. You remember when he told you this? Yes. You remember when he told you that? Yes. He told Peter, you will deny me three times. Yes. Okay? So he told them all this. He prepared them for what was before them. Yeah. He's doing that with us too. All right. If you look in the Bible, you see we have to walk this journey. Yeah. But we can't walk it alone. All right. So we have to tap into the Holy Spirit. When God leads you somewhere, you gotta say, Lord, Lord. I won't go unless you go with me. Right. I won't go unless you anoint me to do that work. Right. I will not go, Lord. Unless you anointed me to speak that word. Yeah. Go to your brother and sister. But Lord, anoint me to do it. We want to do what God wants us to do in the right spirit. Yeah. Because when you do it in the wrong spirit, you're already in error. Well, because he said, by my loving kindness well, have I drawn it. So you go to someone in error, you already know. Check your spirit. Yeah. Check your spirit. Yeah. I like the Sunday school lesson this morning. Because it tells us to examine ourselves. Yes. We must examine ourselves yes. before we can go to anyone yes. and speak to them. Yes. We gotta make sure we are 
walking upright. Yeah. We are yeah. standing yeah. on the yeah. promises of God. Yeah. How can I tell you something if I haven't experienced it myself? Yeah. How can I tell you something if I don't know what the Lord is saying to me? So I must examine myself. I have to make sure that what I'm telling you, God has given it to me. Yeah. And what God has given to me, he's allowed me through the power of the Holy Ghost to give it to you. Amen? Amen. Yeah. So he tells them, if you love me, keep my commandments. We won't go nowhere in the power of the Holy Ghost unless we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not hard. It's for our good. They're not hard. Not hard. So, the scripture tells us, do you not know that your body is the temple of God? <coughs> do you not know? It's in the world. Do you not know that your body is the temple of God? So when you realize that, you know you're walking around with this special power that God has given us. Yeah, yeah. You want to do what's right. Yeah, yeah. You want to keep your temple clean. Yeah. Because God is not going to dwell in an unclean temple. And why do I say that? I'm going to take you back to the Old Testament. All right. God's Holy Spirit dealt uh, was contained in the Ark of the Covenant. And as long as that ark was with them, All right. well, well. they knew uh -huh. the power of God was with them. Yes. But it wasn't until mm -hmm. the ark was taken away from them, first Samuel. Yeah. I hear you. The ark was taken away from them. Yes. And what happened? Yeah. They started getting taken over by the Philistines. Uh -huh. Why? Because the glory of the Lord no. departed. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They couldn't do nothing Nothing's on their own without right. that ark. Uh -huh. And so it is with us. The Holy Spirit dwells. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. God says he dwells within us. Yeah. So we have to make sure that we're walking in right standing. Yeah. We have to make sure we're living a life pleasing to God. Yeah. We have to make sure that God is leading us. And we're not eating ourselves. Oh, he said, try the spirit by the spirit. Right. And see if it's of Christ. Right. Because every spirit that comes to you is not of God. Right. So you better know, you better know, you better know. You better know how to shout from yourself. You can no longer sit up under leadership that's not right. right. You have to get to a point where you say, I've been in this church all my life. But when you see that pastor going astray, Lord, move me out of here. You don't want nothing falling on you that's not coming from God. Well, Because everything that's going on in churches today, it's sad. And you got so many people that's living down here in hell. And they may die and go to hell. If they don't get it right. And the only way they're going to get it right is if they tap in to the spirit provided to us. We are the temple of God. So we have to protect what we have inside of us. I never want to sit in the presence of God and feel he's not there. That's a miserable feeling. I never want to be in the presence of God and don't feel him. Because I know something's missing. Something that I'm doing is not right. So I go back and I say, Lord, tell me what I need to do to get it right. I don't want to live on this earth without the power of the Holy Ghost. Power number one in the presence of the Holy Ghost. We living in trying times. And the Bible says, if it was not for Christ, even the very elect of us would be fooled. So everything that look good, and everything that we claim to be good is not good. So you got to be in tune with the Spirit. You have to ask the Holy Spirit to let you discern. Discern what's not of Him. Because the devil comes but to steal, to kill, and destroy. And everybody say, well, he knew the Bible. The devil knew the Bible because he tempted Jesus with the Bible. So everybody that says, or quote a scripture to you, he tells us to study yeah. to show ourselves a workman that need not be ashamed, yeah. rightly 
dividing the word of truth. So when the enemy comes to you with something that says, the Bible says, well, you better be able to counteract that right, right. with truth. Yeah. Because there's a lot of things going on that's not true. But the Holy Spirit has come to lead us into all truth. He's come to be our guide. He's come to be our helper. He's come to be that one that walks on side of us yeah. Yeah. and tells us, don't go that way. Go this way. I hear people say something told me. Yeah. <laughs> if you know about the Spirit, you will know what that something is. That's the Holy Spirit leading you. That's the Holy Spirit moving you away from danger, seen and unseen. That's the Holy Spirit telling you, no, I don't want you to do that today. Do it tomorrow. I get up in the morning and say, look, what would you have me to do today? You know why? Because I know my day is much better. I know I've asked God to guide me, yeah, to lead me, yeah, yeah. and make sure I don't go astray. Uh -huh. right. The glory of the Lord will be removed if we don't do what we're supposed to do with it. All right. All right. The glory of the Lord will be taken from us yes. if we don't do what God commands us to do. If we don't walk upright the way he wants us to, we will mess it up. Yeah. And a lot of people say, well, why is so much going on we took prayer out of school. All right. All right. Ever since we took prayer out of school, it's been going chaos. Why? Because when prayer was in the school, the presence of God was in the school. Yeah. When prayer was in the school, the presence of God was in the school. Now the devil got free course to walk in and do whatever he wants to do. And who's being affected by it? Our children. So it's time for us. Yes. To get on our knees and ask God. Send the Holy Spirit. Send the Holy Spirit to make us bold to go and do what we need to do. Send the Holy Spirit to guide us into the direction you want us to go. Send the Holy Spirit that breaks jokes, that sets the captives free. We need to be about God's business. He gave it to the disciples, and now He's giving it to us as a body. So what are we going to do with it? All right. Where are we going to go with it? Uh-huh. I can only give you truth. I can only give you what's in the word of God. All right. He tells us All right. in Galatians, uh -huh. walk in the spirit. Yes. And you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And that's all it is. We wrestle not against prince and parents. It's, it's the flesh that's weak. It's the flesh. It's the I want. I want. I desire. I hear people say, well, God understands I have needs. God has needs too. He has needs for a body that will walk upright. He has needs for a church that will stand up for righteousness. He has needs for a people that will say, no, that's wrong. This is what the Bible says. This is what the Word of God says. Yes. We are not bold enough to check people yes. with the Word of God. Don't do it in your own strength. Show them in the Word of God. I don't argue with nobody over the Bible. Well. I go to the scripture. I give them a piece of paper. I say, check your scriptures. Mm -hmm. Look at what the Word of God says. All right. The Bible says the word of God is powerful. Yeah. It's like a two-edged sword. Yes. You're going to either draw them or you're going to drive them. Right. You're going to either draw them or you're going to drive them. But whose side are you going to be on? Mm -hmm. Are you going to be on the Lord's side okay. or are you going to be on the devil's side? Uh -huh. Are you going to choose God or are you going to choose to pleasure your flesh? Yeah, well, well. well. I don't intend on pleasure my flesh. You know what? I want to see him one day. Yeah. I want him to say, well done, <coughs> thy good and faithful servant. I want to do what I need to do to walk into the gates of glory. Yeah. I want to be able to say him, hear him say, well done. We are done. Well done. We are done. Well done. Yeah. But it begins here. Yes, it this is the dressing up from sex. Well, well. This is where we prepare <laughs> yeah. for yeah. the Lord to come back. Yes. For a church without spot and wrinkle. Yes. This is where it all begins. Yes. Jesus walked on earth. Mm -hmm. He completed his work. Mm -hmm. He's now sitting on the right hand of the right. Father. Yes. 
making intercessions for you yes. and for me so that we can get it right. So that he could come back and take back his bride, who we are. So will you, with me, daily ask God yes. to send the Holy Spirit to complete his work. As we go to Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, yes. and they looked up and they seen him going on. They didn't understand it until he sent the Holy Spirit. All right. And it wasn't until the Holy Spirit appeared on the day of Pentecost. Uh -huh. And then they went out and they did mighty works for the Lord. Amen. <coughs> uh, 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 Peter, Peter had so much glory on him, so much of the Holy Spirit. People were being healed even as he walked by his shadow. I said, Lord, have that, please. But we ain't all gonna get that. Because we don't know what he had to go through to get it. Yeah. But he will. Yeah. He will anoint us to do whatever he calls us to do. He will equip us to go forth with power. He's just looking for a willing vessel. That's all he's looking for. And when you say like me, Lord, Lord. here I am. Yes. Send me. Send me. Amen.
In church in the day, good message. Yeah. One of my late pastors gone home be with the Lord, be the sermon at the end of comfort. Wait in Jerusalem. All we can talk about is wait in Jerusalem. Don't go. Be in the right spirit. Evangelist, thank you. Way of a bad message. Bring to us. Thank you. Someone can see us, Lord, and realize 
realize that that is our Father's work. And here comes Holly and I yield. I yield. I can't hold on to you. Keep us, Lord, as we go. Never out of your presence, but out of each other, Lord. Keep us in your peace, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray.